Hi class, so in this presentation I'm going to review with you balanced and chemical reactions. So why do we balance chemical reactions? Because of the law of conservation. The law of conservation of matter states that no atoms can be created or destroyed. So when you do a chemical reaction, whatever atoms you started with, you have to end with. And this is true of anything that you'll do in this class. Now, if you deal with nuclear chemistry, you can actually destroy atoms into their into smaller atoms. But in the case of benchtop chemistry, you can't destroy atoms and you can't create atoms. How do you balance chemical reactions? Make sure that all the number of each type of atom is equal on the reactant and on the product side. So remember, the reactants are the left side of the reaction and the products are the right side of the reaction very very important to know and I'll shorten reactants to R and products to P but you're asking yourself no really how do I do these questions like on the balancing one worksheet well the easiest way to do this is to show you so we're going to do five questions so this is number one on the balancing one handout. So the first way I teach my students to do this is to make a reactant product table. So you count the number of atoms of each type of atom and you list them. So I list the type of atom down the side. This equation here has PBs in it, lead, and it has O's. So I count the PBs on the reactant side and there's one and I count the PVs on the product side and there's one. I count the oxygens on the reactant side and that's two. And I count the oxygens on the on their product side and that's three. Two here and one here. So that's three. You notice that the oxygens are unbalanced. There's two oxygens on the reactant side and three oxygens on the product side the PBs are balanced but we're going to have to figure out how we can get them all to balance all of the atoms to balance so the way this works is that you can only change the number in the front the number in the front is called the coefficient and by changing the coefficients you can now balance the chemical equation so the coefficient is a multiplier. So whatever you are putting in the front multiplies the number of atoms that are in there. So I put a 2 in the front of PBO. There's 2 PBs and 2 Os. If I, if I put a 3 in front of PBO2, it's 3 PBs and 6 Os. So I start by looking at this and see 2 and 3. I can't reduce the number because basically these all have 1s in the front you can see that the O's are separated right and I can see how that is a 2, it's an even number so I can get this to an even number by fixing that to make that 2 and the only way I can do that is by putting a 2 in the front when I put a 2 in the front of the PVO I now have 2 PB's and I have 4 O's see 2 O's here and 2 O's here and notice that this side, the reactant side, is half of the product side, so I put a 2 in the front. 2 PVs and 4 O's. And now you can see that they're all balanced. Now to make sure that I understand that you understand it, I'm going to make sure you put 1's in the front of, of compounds or molecules or atoms that only have 1 as the coefficient. Let's do four more. Again, we write our reactant and product table, and we list the atoms down the left side, P's and O's. We see there's one P on the reactant side, and there's four P's on the product side. We see there's two O's on the reactant side, and there's ten O's on the product side. So, we got to figure out what coefficients can I put in to make sure that the reaction is balanced? So first we pick P maybe. You can pick O, it doesn't matter. 
we will have to multiply this side by something to get it to be equal to 4. So realize that you can multiply by 4 to get to 4, right? So I put a 4 there. 4 p's equal 4 p's. You see that you have to put a number here in front of this coefficient for oxygen to make it 10 oxygens on the right side. So what times 2 gets you 10? So that's 5. So you put 5 in the front. And now you see that the number of atoms on the reaction side equals the number of products, the number of atoms on the product side. So you put a 1 to make sure that we've filled in every blank for the coefficients. Let's do a third example. A third example is Al plus N2 makes Al or aluminum nitride. We make our reactant product table. We put our atoms on the left side that we need to that we need to equate. We put on the reactant side there's only one aluminum. On the product side there's only one aluminum, already balanced. On the reactant side, there are two nitrogens, but on the product side, there's only one. So you notice that you have to manipulate the nitrogens. So you have to figure out what coefficients to put in front. So, well, since I need to manipulate the product side, I'm going to put a 2 here just to try it out. I see that when I put a 2 there, there's now two ends. When I put a 2 in the front, there's also two aluminums and I've unbalanced the aluminums. So now I need to figure out what number to put over here to make it 2 just like the products. I'd put a 2 in the front and then it'd be 2 on both sides. And, I, and just to make sure I fill in every blank I put in a 1. So you see that's how to do that problem. This example is number 16 from the balancing one handout and you can see that you will need to use a slightly different strategy if you want to make sure that this works properly. We're going to make a reactant product table. We list all the atoms, LA, NA. But instead of listing N's and O's separately, or O's and H's separately, I'm going to keep OH and NO3. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because OH sticks together. Notice there's OH on the left side and there's OH on the right side. There's NO3 on the left side, and there's NO3 on the product side. So if we can keep them together, that will prevent us from doing more work. So let's see. Let's track the, all the atoms. There's one LA on the left and one LA on the right. One NA on the reactant side and one NA on the product side. There's one OH on the reactant side and three OH is right there. There's a three three OHs on the product side. There's three NO3s on the reactant side and there's one NO3 on the product side. So you can see that these two polyatomic groups on the bottom are not balanced. So we have to multiply with this OH by three. Right? We only fill in with the coefficients the most of the time I see people in the beginning make mistakes by trying to change the atoms over here. You can only change the number of atoms by changing the coefficient that goes in the front of each molecule or compound or atom. So I'm going to put a 3 there. When I put a 3 there, the OH is changed to 3. But I notice the NA also changes to 3. So I'm going to put a 3 there. Now we, we go to balancing the NO3s. The NO3s, there's three of them, and here there's only one of them. So I put a 3 in front of the Na NO3. The Na's change to 3, and the NO3s change to 3. Remember, it's not nine NO3s, it's three NO3s. Now you notice that all the atoms and polyatomic groups are balanced so I need to fill in ones where I didn't put any other coefficient and we're done. So remember the keys to balancing are to make sure that the atoms are equal on both sides and the way we do that is by changing the coefficients. 
So we can only change the coefficients. That is the numbers that go in front of a chemical species. Sometimes it helps to follow the polyatomic groups. For some of you, you'll be able to do this visually. For others of you, you need to use a reactant product table. And that will help you visualize what you're counting and to make sure that you do it correctly. Remember that the coefficient is a multiplier, not an addition and not a subtraction and not a division. It's a multiplier for the number of, the, of that compound or molecule or atom. And you'll find as you do this more, you can follow odd even rules to help you know where to multiply to balance the chemical equation. So, in class, you get some practice to do this, and you can then finish that up for homework. But I'm glad that you're watching this video. Thanks. Bye.